Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Tonight we are talking all about Cricut's new infusible ink pens and markers on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So, uh, a week ago we unboxed all of the Cricut goodies, the Cricut infusible ink goodies that Cricut sent me and that was really exciting and fun and we did a couple of projects. So in that box were these Cricut infusible ink pens and we didn't get the chance to play with them and I want to do that tonight with you. I want to try drawing some things on the Cricut and then transferring it and then drawing things by hand and transferring it and I also got a special request from someone who emailed me before the video started tonight to do um, to actually try drawing on a transfer sheet and then transfer that to see that if the pen and the transfer sheet could be combined. So we're gonna give that a try and see how that works. So if you guys are ready, I'm gonna just, we're just gonna head on over to the craft area and we're gonna get started. Sound good? Cause I'm excited to see how this works. I have not tried it yet. We are trying it together for the first time tonight. All right, let's head on over. All right, so I've got everything all ready to go because we need some very specific things when we're working with the infusible ink pens. And I want to just go over those things with you so that we know what we're, what we need for this project. So of course we need our Cricut and I've got my Cricut Explorer Air here too. We're going to need a light grip cutting mat, which I have right here. So that's ready to go as well. We need our Cricut Easy Press. I have my Easy Press 2 Mini and we're going to need a mat. We need the pens, of course. Now, I only have the pens. I don't have the markers. But we're going to experiment with the pens tonight. And by the way, if you have requests or questions, go ahead. Let me know what they are because we can definitely um, experiment with some, you know, if you have ideas for them as well. You also need the heat-resistant tape some laser copy paper and I ordered this special just for this project. Let me show you what it looks like. So I ordered hammer mill premium laser print paper for color. I have no idea if this is the best thing, but it's laser copy paper. It's white and it says it's for color. So I'm hoping that this is, this is good, right? Um, we also need some butcher paper, which I have right here and some cardstock which I have here, uh, lint-free cloth. I'm gonna use my camera um, cleaning cloth because that's lint-free, a pair of scissors, and of course we need design space to make our designs. All right, so I actually have a design prepared and I'm gonna show you what it is because tonight I want to focus on our coasters. So I haven't yet done these. I did open the package up. I haven't made them yet, but I think it would be great especially for doing the pens, because I mean, these pens that I have, they're 0.4, so they're pretty fine point. So we're not gonna be making giant, like designs that we could put on a bag or a uh, t-shirt tonight because my pens are so fine. So they're gonna work better on a coaster. So we're gonna make a couple coasters and we'll see how things go. So I designed a mandala for the coaster. Let me show you what that looks like. So here, I am in Cricut Design Space and you can see I have designed a mandala. Now this mandala is special because I've actually made it so that these are each individual lines. And so the pen is going to draw it out just like we see right here. And I put my initials in the middle, um, Jennifer Lynn Maker. And we're going to have our Cricut draw this shape out onto the copy paper and then we're going to color it and then we're going to put it onto a coaster and i see a question here and i think i can move this way over so that we can everyone can see the question i can <laughs> awesome so megan says are those just regular cricut pens no they're not these are so these are the cricut infusible ink pens so it says right at the top cricut infusible ink so they have pens and they have markers. Um, these are, it actually has got directions on the back and you can see I've opened it just to make sure everything is working, which it has. So these are the 0.4 pens. So they're really pretty fine points. 
Then they also have markers, which are much broader and you could use to like color things in. So, but we'll be making do with what we have, but this is, these are not regular Cricut pens. They're infusible ink pens. So there is definitely a difference because the ink works differently, right? It's not, it's so, and I know there's a bunch of different colors. These are the colors that I have tonight in space. So I've created this design and we're going to go, I've go ahead, I've got everything else set up. I put my initials in the middle. And by the way, if you like this design, I will of course make it available to you for free, like I always do. And um, I'm also hoping to do a whole tutorial with this design for a tote bag this weekend, but we're gonna do a coaster tonight. So I've got it all ready to go. I'm just gonna keep it black because I want everything that you see here to be black. So I'm gonna click make it. Wait, let me just one more thing. So I'm gonna select this. Now note that I have it on draw. See in the line type menu up here, I've chosen draw. So all and all of my over here in the uh, layer layer panel on the on the right side, everything here is draw as well. Everything that we're going to be doing, yes, everything is done. So that's important because we're using our pen to draw on paper for this project. So this is different than what we would normally do. So we're not cutting anything out. We're drawing instead. So I'm going to click make it. And here we are. Now it's important to note that we need to, just like our infusible ink project from last week and all the infusible ink projects that we do, we have to mirror it. So isn't, it, isn't that funny guys? My monogram is exactly the same backwards as it is forward. <laughs> so you can't even tell it's mirrored. However, we did mirror it. So don't forget to mirror your design, okay? And, uh, other than that, we don't have to. It can be fine. It's right up here in the corner, just the way it should be. Note that it says draw over here. That's exactly what we want. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the material size is because we're going to go up here. We didn't, now, of course, this is size for a coaster. The coasters are just under three and a third inches in diameter. So I've sized it so that it will fit within the coaster with any luck. All right. So this looks good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and click continue and connect my Cricut Air, which is the one that's sitting here on my desk. And we're going to set our material to copy paper because that's what we're going to be drawing on is copy paper. And that's all we have to do. So we don't have to worry about, there's no cutting involved at all, right? And that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna head back over to my camera so you can, so we can cut this out together. So because we're using copy paper, we want to use the light grip mat. Copy paper is very thin. And if you use a stronger grip mat, it might, you know, it might be hard to get it off. It might want to tear and stuff. That's why they and I also recommend that you use the light grip mat, which is this blue one here, by the way. All right, so we've got this in. Let's move this here out of the way and put this into our Cricut. Now, of course, we can't forget the pen. I can't, I guys, I have forgotten the pen before. I have actually done this in the past when I was doing a project and forgot to put the pen in. All right, so we're going to use the black pen. And again, this is a 0.4 Cricut infusible ink pen. All right, so it goes into the machine. So there's a little white arrow on all of the Cricut pens, including the uh, infusible ink pens. And I always put that face up so I can see where it's supposed to go and the, basically the arrows meet on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in now. And you'll often hear like a little snap when it gets in there. And uh, tip, always put your caps on the tips of your pens when they're in the machine so you don't lose it. And then close the clamp. And that should be good to go, everything feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and press the flashing button and we're going to start drawing our design. And I can see that it's working. See it drawing? Isn't that awesome guys? So it's just drawing out the design just as I designed it. It's a single line design. So it's perfect for this project. And uh, yeah. 
I don't know how long this is going to take, but this is the basic idea is that you draw out your design using your Cricut infusible ink marker, and then you color it using the other colors if you want to. I mean, you don't have to, if you don't want to, you can just draw it out like this. And of course, if you're using like something that's thicker, like the, um, the markers, you know, this, you're going to be filling in more as you do this than I am, but this is actually very fine. And I think it looks pretty cool. And of course, if you want to do multiple colors with your Cricut to have it draw, you totally can. You don't have to do the rest by hand, but we're going to do the rest by hand tonight. So you can see how that works out. And it also reminds us that before handling infusible ink materials, we want to make sure our hands are free of any oils or lotions because they can transfer um, to our project if we're not careful. So I haven't had any issues yet. I did a project today. In fact, I would love to show you my project. So I did this project today with the blue and the red that I have. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. It's so cool. It literally looks like something that you would just buy in the store. It, it, it has that feel to it because it's like, it's like it was printed onto the fabric rather than having like the layer of vinyl. It's really cool. And I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I like it. I have pictures of it in the Facebook group. If you are interested in seeing it close up and I've already recorded a tutorial for it and I'm just editing it now. And so that should be online, hopefully tomorrow. So the whole tutorial on how I made this project, hopefully it should be tomorrow. So I'll set this over here. All right. So this is done. So we're going to unload it and this is what it looked like. You see that? Isn't that cool? That looks great. Doesn't it? Let's see if I can get it to, to actually focus on it. Doesn't seem like it wants to. There we go. So this is the project. So I can now just transfer it like this or I can color it in. And I thought we would experiment with a little bit of coloring and then try transferring it to see how it worked out. All right. So I'm going to flip this over. Remember, always flip over your mats like this. It makes it so much easier to remove your project without it tearing or curling. So much easier. We'll put this under there. We won't need that again tonight, I don't think. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. We don't need to have the extra paper hanging around either. All right, so I'm not going to do a lot of coloring, just a little bit so that you can see what this looks like but I mean after all I've only got these kind of funky colors anyways but you know I can color in the leaves and the hearts and that's what I'll do just right now and we could zoom in on this so all I'm gonna do so this is just this is the Cricut pen and we can put this in our machine but I'm just gonna do it by hand and I'm just gonna color it in. So like this is really like, you know, those coloring books that some people just love. So can you imagine transferring one of those designs to the, like a you know, big size and then spending all that time to color it in? Because I know some people love to do this. I do not pretend to be one of those people. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not going to have to sit here and watch me color for too long. We're just going to do a couple. But like, the, wouldn't that be cool? So instead of having that design just be in a book somewhere, but you could put it onto a t-shirt or a tote bag and uh, show off your handiwork. I think, I think that this is an ideal project for people who love to do the adult coloring book projects, right? So I, I mean, this is a very fine point pen, so it's a little bit difficult to fill in all the bits, but you know, with time I could sit here and color every single leaf very carefully staying inside the lines, which, uh, yeah, isn't probably the thing that I'm best at. I'll be honest. <laughs> All right. And then I want to do some of the hearts as well. So in fact, I'm going to color a couple of these so they're not entirely filled all the way in so we can see what happens when we transfer it. Will it transfer it like that? Kind of that sort of sketchy look or will it fill in and bleed a little bit? Yeah. And I don't know the answer to this because I have not done this before. This is my first time doing it tonight. So don't be surprised if we make mistakes, guys. Uh, remember, I make mistakes so you don't have to. All right, so that was the green. And let me do a couple of these hearts in pink like this. 
and I will, I guess I could do my name, my letters in purple. And of course you could color this whole thing. Oops, I just went out of the lines there, sorry. If I was going slower, I'm sure I'd do a better job. I know you guys will forgive me. Because after all, this is not a video about how to color. <laughs> um, and I'm checking the questions here. So yes, uh, someone asked about whether you have to mirror it. And yes, for any infusible ink project, it has to be mirrored. Of course, my initials are the same backwards and forwards, so you can't even tell. But I did mirror it. We did totally mirror that, believe it or not. And let me get the purple one out and do the center. And by the way, if you want to do this project, I will show you how to do the center with your own initials as well um, in my tutorial this weekend when I put it onto a tote bag, which is, which I actually have more detail for this when it gets bigger. I have all these little dots and, and, and hash marks and cool things. And we're going to have those on the tote bag and we'll do more coloring and uh, more detail work. Sorry, I'm not being very exact there, guys. <laughs> All right. So if it gets out of the lines, it's the, my fault. It's not its fault. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to need to, we're gonna, I want to put this on a coaster. So there we go. So that's what I'm going to transfer to the coaster. And which we have over here. So these are the uh, ceramic coaster blanks that Cricut sent me. And there's four of them. And again, there's a little under like three and a third inches. But there's one thing I want to warn you about right now. So this here. So when I cut, when I opened this, they were in here like this. And there's a little thing in the back that said cut here. See the little scissors thing? So I got out my knife and I cut it, right? And I apparently I cut it really well because I cut into one of the coasters. Can let me see if you, can you kind of see that that line right there? So this is a case of me making a mistake, so you don't have to. So use scissors like they say. It says scissors here. It doesn't say use a knife, so that you don't cut into your coaster because it did. It definitely cut into the top layer of the coaster. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside. Maybe we'll do a test with that one later. I'm going to use this one. Okay. And these are definitely ceramic, right? They, are, they, they have like a unglazed base and a glazed top. And I'll bet you there's something on this as well. That's going to allow us to uh, put this infusible ink project on there. Okay. So let's go back to our directions so we don't make any mistakes. Okay. So we need to use a lint free cloth to remove any debris from the coaster. So I am going to, wipe it down with my photo lens, my lens cloth, because that is definitely lint free. So that would be, if you're not sure what to use, a lens cloth is a great option. Now we need to cover the cover this with, um, we need to put it onto our mat. I have this big one, we'll use this. All right, let me just wipe it down one more time since I just touched it, okay. So Cricut has special pressing mats that they highly recommend that we use. And that's what I'm going to be using uh, for this project. Okay. All right. So now we need to cover the mat with our cardstock to protect it. Is that right? Um, and then we put our coaster onto it. I don't really know why we really have to have that cardstock there. I don't feel like this is going to be an issue because there's no way the infusible ink is going to bleed through this coaster like it might, might a t-shirt however we're following the directions so we can still do this okay it says place the design down on the coaster using heat resistant tape to secure it we're going to take this and we're going to put it face down right so here's our design so you can see it right here and we're going to put it face down on to the coaster you know i'm going to trim this right now so that we can see all of the edges really carefully and it's going to make it easier for us to tape it too and center it. I don't want my mandala to be off center. That would, that would look kind of funny, I think. Okay, there we go. 
and I'm going to put it face down on my coaster. And yay, it does fit. It's awesome. And Greg got our heat resistant tape. So I'm just going to, I guess, take off a little bit. Okay, I mean, look at the picture. It shows us just sort of taping it over it. So taping it in place. It looks like we're actually taping it like this, okay. So, and again, let's pay attention to what side I'm putting this on. The shiny side is the coast, is the actual coaster side. This not shiny side is the bottom of the coaster. So, that looks good. So we tape it down. And they show it being taped in all four corners. So we're going to do that too. There's, so there's two. Honestly, that seems like enough. It's not going to move. That's good enough for me. <laughs> all right. So we've got it taped down. Now we need to flip the coaster so the bottom is facing up. Okay, now this makes sense. This explains why we need to put this uh, paper down because we are protecting our mats. So we're going to flip it over like this so we can see the bottom of the coaster. Um, and so we've got our pressing mat, our paper, our design, which is taped to our coaster. All right. Let's see. So now we are going to cover the coaster with butcher paper. In fact, there's two pieces of butcher paper. That's a lot. Whatever. There we go. So here's the butcher paper. Okay, and I think it's time to, we don't, looks like we don't preheat this or anything. I'm double checking. I don't, um, I don't see any, I don't see any preheating that's necessary to do with the coaster. Um, they do want us to set our easy press to 400 degrees for 240 seconds. So I've got my easy press, I've got it turned on, and I'm going to set it to 400 degrees. All right, so there's 400 and for 240 seconds. So I'm going to hold down that plus button and it grows up in five second increments. And so we want 240 seconds, which is uh, four minutes, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes, four minutes. So that's actually a long time. And I don't know, I think that we can't use the easy press, original easy press, because it, that, that's what they say is that you can't use it with the coasters. I haven't tried it yet, but that's what they say because of it needs to go to 400 degrees and the original easy press two can't. And because we need to do this for 240 seconds, I don't think that we can get the original easy press hot enough, long enough for that to work. So that's why we're using the easy press two. All right, so while that is heating up, I'm going to go over my designs and make sure all the, over the instructions and make sure that I've got everything. So we've used our lint-free cloth to remove the debris. We covered our easy press mat with the cardstock. We placed everything face down. We've used the tape to secure it in place. We flipped the coaster over and we have our butcher paper on top and yeah, and remember that a piece of butcher paper comes in each package of infusible ink transfer sheets, by the way. And it sounds like the easy press is now ready to go. So we're going to press at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 205 degrees Celsius, without any added pressure. So we're just going to like set it on there for 240 seconds, which is, of course, four minutes. So we're just going to lift this up and set this down just right onto it. No added pressure and press go. So no added pressure means we don't have to hold it. So we're just gonna let this sit here and hopefully do its job. <laughs> Let's straighten up a little bit here. I think, we, oh, so don't forget to put your pens away. I have forgotten and then been really sad when the pen dries out. So put your cat back on your pen and I also recommend that you store it uh, tip down, right? So if you're gonna put it into your pen uh, pen accessory tray, put it tip down. I'm gonna, however, put this back into the little box and then store it tip down so that uh, I keep everything together because I don't wanna lose these. So we have other colors 
And I'm still gonna do another project. I'm gonna draw something and which we're gonna transfer it so we can see how hand drawing transfers as well. I know there's another one around here. And if there's time, we will do the um, swatch test where we put the pen on the pen on a piece of um, the transfer swatches. So do you guys have questions? I'm lo looking for your questions to see if I'm missing anything at all. Someone's, yes, you do have to let them cool completely. I agree, but you don't have to let them dry. So it's not wet. You do have to let them cool down before you start moving your design around because it can cause what they call ghosting or marbling if you're moving that around and such. And Jolene says, I wonder what would happen if you did it right side up. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I'm not sure I want to try. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Miranda, Miranda says, how can you tell the difference between the infusible ink and the regular pens? This is a Cricut regular pen. This is actually a 0.4 tip. So it's the same tip size and it's like, you know, I don't know, pink mauve or whatever. And so it just says Cricut and it, it says exactly what it is here. 0.4 tip wine, right? It says it on here. Whereas the Cricut infusible ink pens, they actually say, let's get one out. It actually says on here, Cricut infusible ink. So you can totally tell the difference here. These look a lot different. I mean, the, the barrel is the same shape and everything, but one says Cricut infusible ink and the other one just says Cricut uh, 0.4 tip. And by the way, I can like smell something. It smells like heat, like when you iron something. Um, I'm sure it's getting really super hot under there. And I think that because we flipped it over, I mean, ceramic, isn't ceramic like a conductor of heat? Whatever, the heat must be going through the coaster to the other side to put the design in. I don't know. It seems crazy to me. I guess we're going to find out if it worked or not. Let's see. His, uh, David says, has anyone tried the original Easy Press? Uh, I did try it when we did the fabric swatches last time but I'm not trying it for the coaster because they say it won't work. So there's not even directions for it. And I only have four coasters and I don't want to waste them later when I can just buy the materials at the store. Um, I will experiment more and we'll see if things like that work, but not yet because I can't get them. All right. So it's almost time. All right. So we lift this straight up, put it back into its little holder Always be mindful. This is very, very hot. Okay. Um, let's see what we need to do next. So it says caution coaster will be very hot. Let it cool completely before handling it. Then, then slowly remove the butcher paper, the tape, and the design. All right. So, so can you guys see the butcher paper here? It's actually discolored. It's like... I'm not going to say it's burned, but it looks cooked. <laughs> it looks, it looks like a piece of toast right here. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons that they're, we're having us flip it over so that we're not like discoloring it. And so that the heat is coming through the ceramic of the coaster. I don't know. It's a possibility, whatever. So, so we're letting it let this cool down. This is probably really hot. So the paper isn't hot. I'm afraid to touch it, guys. I don't want to burn myself. I feel like I could let, remove this butcher paper. Okay. So there's the underside of the coaster. Yes, it's scorched. That's the good word for it. But it's not bad. It wasn't burned. I wasn't, I, I, I'm not worried about anything having happened to it. But you could tell that heat was definitely applied. Four minutes of heat at 400 degrees, which is really rather a lot. So I'm going to give this some more time to cool down to get move this pen out of the way so we don't confuse it. Put these back in here. So I can feel heat I, without even touching it. I am not touching it. I can feel the heat rising off of this. This coaster is hot. I don't know how long it's going to take to cool down, but it feels very hot to me right now. Miranda says, I love the background of your work area. Thank you. Um, so this background is, it's a cricket mat. It actually is a mat. So on one side, I don't know if you can see this. I don't want to bend this. It's like, it's got the grid on one side and then it's got this pretty design on the other. Um, and they have several of these like this. 
and Greg actually brought a cool tool that we can use to determine if how this is cooling off. He brought, what is this called? Infrared thermometer. So we can point it at the surface and it tells us its temperature. We can see that it's 273, 273 right now. You guys see that? And not cooled off yet, so this might take a while. This is actually a really cool thing um, because all you have to do is point the little laser at the surface. Like for example, over here, it's 82 degrees, right? My hand is 93 degrees, 92. And the coaster is 269. Do you see how quick that is? All right, so what are we at? 262, so we're definitely cooling off. So that's awesome. Sandy says, when is Greg gonna do a video? Yeah, Greg, when are you gonna do a video? You should totally do a video. We should do a video together. <laughs> I've already thought of it. We can totally both sit here at my computer and be in the picture. <laughs> so I'm at 253 now. Now it did say to let it cool completely. So what I'm gonna do guys is just set this aside for now and we will check on it so we can just move it over here. Now I also wanted to do a draw, one that where we draw it. So here is a piece of the same laser copy paper and I'm gonna take one of the coasters and put it face down in the corner and I'm going to take one of the infusible ink pens and I'm gonna trace it. Are you moving that so I have more space? Thanks, Greg. All right, and I'm just gonna trace it around, being careful not to get the pen on the coaster. Oops, it's not even, there we go. Not really close, just, just so that I know the size of this. All right, and then I'm gonna cut it out, and then we know when we have a blank for our next design. So I'm just gonna cut this out. Um, and I think this is a good way to do coasters. And I'm gonna cut inside the black line because we don't want that black line to transfer to our coaster, right? So I'm just gonna cut inside like this. Does not have to be perfect circle. It just needs to be inside that line, you know, so that you have, a, generally you have a, a circle. And now if we take, if we draw on this with our um, Cricut Infusible Ink pens, then flip it over and put it onto our coaster, it's gonna fit. That's what our goal is here. So I thought that I would just draw just some watermelons for summer. I have to write backwards, remember? So you have to, if you're not good at writing backwards, you'll wanna like practice first. So I'm gonna write the name backwards. So I'm gonna write summer right on here like this. I'm not particularly skilled at doing it backwards, so yeah. Okay, so I wrote summer backwards. See that? And then I was just gonna put some watermelons around like that. And then we will fill them in with, I mean, I am, I'm limited to the colors. So I've got, oops, I've got um, pink and I've got green and some brown. So I figured that this would work, right? This works for watermelons. I know they look like little pizzas. Greg already told me they look like vegan pizzas. <laughs> That's what he told me. Thanks, Greg. I was going for watermelons, not pizzas. All right, so um, I've made my little design here. By the way, let's check this and see how it's doing. We are at 199. You guys see that? When, uh, 180. So we're still cooling down. All right, so we'll use the green. And I think I'll just use the green and the pink and the black for this. So this is just an experiment to see what it's like to draw a design and it could be anything. And what's cool about this is that you could have your kid or your grandkid draw a design for you 
and you can then put it onto a shirt or tote bag or coaster or whatever you find to put it on and you have a permanent permanent uh, piece of their artwork right I think that is so awesome and I don't know I mean I'm a mom and I know that so my my child's school did these um things where you could like they would like draw something and then you could choose to have them transferred to various things so like you could have the picture printed out or it could go into a keychain whatever bunch of things they were really pricey this would actually be um, more fun and cheaper. All right, so let's check this. So it's at 160, 183. All right, still working on it. All right, so I'm going to put the black seeds in first and then fill it in with the pink. And now it should look less like pizza, guys. course filling all this pink in would be a lot easier with a marker I don't have the marker I won't have markers until infusible ink products hit Michaels um, online on June 16th and in the stores on June 21st and you can bet Greg and I are going to be at our Michaels on the morning of June 21st expecting there to be infusible ink stuff all right so now I can fill this in with the pink. And I don't know what would happen if I covered up the black. All right. So I've already filled in the black, right? So I don't, if I were to cover it all up, I don't know what would happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some where we haven't, I haven't covered over the black with pink and somewhere I have, so we can see what happens. Like, does it look the same? Um, or does it look different? Does it just kind of become all pink and only the pink transfers or what? Because that's really good to know. Like, do you have to be really careful about how you color? Um, or can you be, you know, just like whatever? Because normally, if I were just using a marker and sitting here and coloring, I would just cover, color, I would probably use color over the black. Because black will shine through. You know, not shine through. It'll, it'll show through but I don't know how it works with the infusible ink. So on this one here, this one that's, um, this one is above summer. I am being very careful to not cover color over the black, the little black seeds. So, okay. So it's all very, uh, I was really careful. So um, this one down here, I'll just color the whole thing, a color, color over the black and we can see when we transfer it if it makes a difference so I'm just going to color the whole thing like this and I don't know what's going to happen uh, this would be a lot easier if I had a marker a lot easier this is a very fine point and I don't know, is it going to show all of my cross hatching or will it bleed a little bit? I just don't know. So, all right, well, that's our, that's our design for our other coaster. So I'm going to get this other one prepped. I'm going to move this over very gently. I think that's fine. We are at 131 in the center right now. Again, the edges, the edges are almost cooled off completely, but not the center. All right. So. Again, we need a piece of paper. We put this down. We want to clean our coaster with our lint-free cloth, just like that. And we're going to put our design on face down, right? So here's our design and it's gonna go on like this. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit, kind of off center anyways. And like, like if, you, if you did something like this, you could make a coaster for every co um, season of the year because there's four in a pack. Wouldn't that be cute? A summer, a fall, a winter, and a spring. All right, so we put it face down on our coaster like this, and we use our tape to secure it. So piece of tape there. And remember, we're putting it on the shiny side of the coaster because that's the top. All right, so there's a piece of tape and one more piece of tape. 
You need to get a dispenser for this so it's easier to use. Okay, so that's our, this is the Cricut Infusible Ink Heat Resistant uh, Tape. And we're using it to keep our design in place so it doesn't slide around because it is under that easy press for a long time, four minutes. Okay. Yes, it was laser, uh, laser copy paper. So in fact, I can show you what brand I used in case you missed it earlier. So I am using Hammer Mill Premium Laser Print for color. I don't know that you have to have such fancy paper, but I found this on Amazon. It wasn't expensive and it looked ideal for this project. So this is what I ordered. I will put links to all of these things uh, below the video after we're done. Okay, so there is our, our design on tape to our coaster. We flip it over, remember, we do it upside down, flipped over, and then we cover it with butcher paper. All right, so this is all ready to go. Let's check this and see how we're doing. We're still at 117 in the center, and so we're gonna wait some more. While we're waiting, we're gonna do this one. So this one's all ready to go. We have the paper layer, we have our design on, upside down and taped down so it's not gonna move anywhere and we've got our butcher paper. So 400 degrees, 240 seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and set this down. And it said no additional pressure. So we're just setting it there. We don't have to push on it or anything like that. I'm gonna slide this over so it doesn't pick up any residual heat from the easy press. Check it again. So the edges, are at uh, 113. The center is at 115. That's interesting. How's it feel? It definitely only feels slightly warm now. It could take a really long time for it to cool all the way down because it's ceramic, right? I don't know how long it could take for ceramic because it's kind of holding steady right now. Before the edges were a lot uh, cooler than the center, but now that's not the case. <laughs> Trying to decide. So do you, do you guys think that I should go ahead and remove the design now or wait until we are at room temperature for this coaster, which keep in mind could be a really long time from now. <laughs> Let me know, you guys get to vote. Let me know if you would like me to Go ahead and take the risk and remove the design now and see how it looks or wait. Okay, so Sandy, Kim, Maria, uh, they all say to, Miranda says to do it. Okay, so right now it looks like almost everyone. Yes, Rhonda, our cooled coaster was registering 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is ceramic and I think it does retain heat. So I think we're just going to give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to, Lift this up gently. That's interesting. So you guys see this? So we've got, this is what it looks like right now. You can see how part of it, like this was to protect our mat by the way, which is good because otherwise that would have uh, transferred over. And this is what it looks like, but we haven't removed the design, the paper yet. So we don't know what it actually looks like. This is what it looks like with the design on it. Um, we still have like, a little under two minutes to go. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's just, let's just do it. So I'm going to carefully remove it. Oh, it's like super stuck on here. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. All right. Ready guys? I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. I really I have not done this before. So, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> this is so cool. Can you guys see this? Oh my gosh, that is awesome. I think, I get, I think it's safe to touch. Oh yeah, I don't feel anything. It just feels like, it just feels like uh, the, the coaster. In fact, you can see, see the reflection of my light on that. There is nothing on that. The ink is like, the, so the way that this infusible ink works is that when it heats, the ink becomes a gas and it seeps into your material and then it 
when it cools, it solidifies again. So that's what happened here. It actually became a gas and this is porous. Ceramic is porous a little bit, I think. I'm pretty sure it is. It would have to be, right? And so it seeped into there and then when it cooled off, it became like a, like it's not smudgeable. I can't smudge this or something. It's not like I'm going to rub this off or anything like that. Isn't that cool? Can you imagine how cool this would have looked if I had spent the time to color it all in? So yay, this worked. That's awesome. All right, so we got 12 seconds to go on this side. This is what it looked like. You cannot reuse these. You can see all of the ink is transferred pretty much. So, um, and I'm not going to be experimenting with reusing them because I only have so many coasters. So maybe later though. All right. So again, we have to repeat the same process. We are supposed to let things cool before we do anything, right? Um, let's see what it is right now. 295 and falling rapidly, depending on where. Like as I move it around, it's, it's going to be a little inconsistent, you know. It's not like perfect. So, yeah, that's also the paper. Like I don't see why we have to have that paper on. Like I don't, I don't, I think that we can remove that. So on the, so it's hotter. So it's at 337 right now. All right, well then while we're waiting for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do that test. So someone asked if I would test drawing onto a, um, a piece of transfer, ink, fusible ink transfer sheet, which is what this is, a little piece of the blue for my project earlier today. And I'm just gonna put something on there and then we're gonna try transferring it to the swatch and we'll see if it transfers both the color as well as the, both the pen as well as the color. So I'm just gonna do a smiley face. I'm gonna color in the eyeballs so we can see if that works. It doesn't wanna to seem to um, color onto the transfer sheet as well as it did the laser the laser copy paper. I mean, it did it, but it didn't seem to flow as easily. So that could be an issue, but maybe, you know, maybe it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so here is our tiny little swatch. I'm gonna make sure that this actually is the same size, which it is, okay? So we need our piece of paper underneath, just like before. So there's our piece of paper and we need our lint roller. We need a new piece of paper, a uh, new, a fresh sticky part thing. I love this lint roller. And we're gonna make sure that we have the lint off our little swatch. There we go. And we have to preheat it. And we have to cover it with butcher paper. We preheat it at, let's double check that I make, I get the temperature right. All the directions for this are on Cricut's site at help.cricut.com, so we don't have to guess or anything. So we have to cover this with the butcher paper. Put this over here. How are we doing on this? 239. So we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll get it down to like 180 and then we'll remove it then. Okay, so we're gonna preheat this for 15 seconds. We're just gonna go straight down. We're gonna wait till this is at uh, 25 seconds. And this says light pressure, so I'm actually keeping my hand on here. I'm just not pushing down. All right, there we go. So there, it's preheated. Now we need to let it cool completely, as I recall. So just double check this. Um, Let's see up, it says let the swatch cool. And then once it's cool, we're gonna put our design face down on the swatch with the clear liner on top and cover it again with butcher paper. And then we're going to heat it for 40 seconds using our Easy Press 2. So it goes face down onto your swat, onto your fabric or your project like that. And you wanna cover it with your butcher paper. And then we're gonna heat it for 40 seconds with our Easy Press. 
Remember, it goes straight down onto, and then we press this and we put light pressure on it. So that's just one hand. How are we doing? It'll be soon. It's at 2.15. Uh, Lisa says, can't you take the coaster off the pad to cool? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't say that we can do that. It's possible that it'll cool off a little faster. However, this mat doesn't feel hot at all. Let's see. It's not, I mean, it's a little bit hot, but it's probably the heat coming from this right now. I don't think that gets hot, the, this pad. I don't think it retains heat at all. So I don't think that's an issue. All right, so we lift straight up and now we have to let this cool before we remove it again. Okay, so what does this say right now? I'm having too much fun with this toy. <laughs> 260 and falling rapidly. And this is at 200 degrees. I don't think it is picking up heat, mat, heat from the mat. The, the mat feels cool. The mat feels like room temperature to me. It doesn't feel hot at all. So I don't think that, I don't think that's doing it. So, and you want to be careful if you, remember it, what happens when we heat it up like this is that that ink is becoming a gas and then it becomes a solid when it cools down. So it needs to stay stationary while it's cooling down. If we mess with it and move it around, it might smudge the design or cause, like they, they say on the Cricut site, it could cause ghosting or marbling. I don't know exactly what those things look like. I think that there were some examples though. Um, I don't want that. I want my coaster to look good. So I'm not going to touch it until I think it's ready to go. Uh, I'm going to take off the butcher paper. I see it slipped a little bit when I put it on. I could have prevented that by using the tape to secure it in place or anything. Amy says, what's my fancy heat toy called? This is a E-Tech City infrared thermometer. And I have to say that we don't, we don't just use it as a thermometer. We also use it to play with our dog. <laughs> our dog loves, loves the laser. We call it the laser bug. And yeah, she, she loves it. So it's a thermometer and dog toy. It's a two in one. <laughs> Where'd you get this, Greg? Got it on Amazon. Okay, well then we can find the link for it and link it for you. It's really useful for lots of things, not just for, you know, easy press projects. All right, we're gonna risk it. We're gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna use my tweezers. And oh, I didn't have to do anything, it came right off. Well, we can see that that worked. That's awesome. So the test here um, was to take a piece of transfer a transfer sheet, an infusible ink transfer sheet like this, and draw on it with an infusible ink marker and see what whether it would transfer both the color and the pen. And you can see that it did. So, and the reason why that's significant is because there are some, there are some, uh, the question that came in because there is a design called, I think it's, um, dark botanical or black botanical, something like that. It's one of the transfer sheet designs. And it's like all black and white. And she wanted to know if she could color it in with her pens. So I would say that the answer is yes. You can take that transfer sheet and color it in with your pens if you'd like to. So cool. Awesome. So we've done that test. So we just need to see how we're doing over here. We're at 157. I think that we can go ahead and risk it now. So pick it up. This is what it looks like before we remove the design. So let's go ahead and remove it and see how it transferred. Now this test is entirely hand drawn with the Cricut infusible ink pens on a piece of laser copy paper. Um, so we didn't use the pen attachment on our Cricut at all. We just drew it right onto the paper. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. It's so shiny and the color is so vibrant. I mean, look at that. It's really nice. Sorry, that's not, there we go. Look at how pretty that is. My drawing isn't amazing, but I was doing it quick. <laughs> However, it totally looks, it's, it's cute. It looks hand drawn and that's totally fine. I would love to give some 
pens and a piece of paper to my daughter and have her draw us one of her cute little faces for me and put it onto a coaster and then I can keep it at my desk and I'll always have it. She makes these really cute little um, anime faces that she draws. We call them Alex faces. They're very cute. So anyways, this would be a super fun project if you have someone who likes to draw and you would like to preserve their artwork. And the colors are so pretty. And again, this is not anything that's going to smudge it still. It actually still feels a little bit uh, warm, uh, but it's not going to smudge off or anything. And let's compare these two that we did. So this is, you hear the ceramic. So this is the one that we did uh, first here, the mandala. And we used our Cricut pen to draw that one and then filled in some of it with a uh, color. Not all of it, just because I didn't want you guys to sit here and be bored. And this one here in my right hand is entirely hand drawn onto the copy paper and then transferred over. And they look really, really cute and the colors are really vibrant and that looks actually the can't my screen looks about the same as what I'm seeing with my naked eye. So hopefully you're seeing that as well. Um, it's a little bit the color, the pink in with the naked eye is a little bit pinker and on the screen it looks a little more orange, but it that looks like a true pink to me. It's not quite as orange as you see on the screen. All right, and then of course our other test was to see if we could use the Cricut transfer sheets and pens together, which we could. All right, let's uh, switch this back over and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have at all. I'm glad, awesome, I can see all your comments. I'm really happy that you like them, it's really cute. Like seriously, look at how cute that is. You can see here, the uh, seeds look the same. I don't see any differences. They all came through just fine, whether we put the pink over the black or whether we were careful not to cover the black with pink. You know, like, so all the colors will transfer, right? All the colors will transfer when you do this. And so you don't have to be careful about not, you don't have to cover things up, but keep in mind that every, every ink that you put on there will transfer over. So that's what I saw. Let's see, uh, JJ says, do you know if you can add to it after you've already heated it? My understanding is you don't wanna do that because it will actually, um, it could change the color of it or it can make it fade. That's why when we do any kind of uh, layered and transfer sheet projects with the infusible ink, hang on, we want to layer everything and then put it onto our material and press it rather than um, do it again. So I think it's best if we don't do it again. I haven't tried it. I'm, so I'm just going based on what I've read from Cricut. Let's see. Um, the colors are phenomenal, aren't they, Stacy? It does take, a, I don't, so Elizabeth says it seems to take too long to cool off. I don't think it takes too long. I think that if we were making a set of coasters, we would just do all four in a row. You guys wouldn't, we weren't, we're just testing things tonight. And they would all be cooling off together. And it took Five minutes, I don't think that's too long. I don't think it's too long for something that looks this cute and will last like as long as this coaster lasts, maybe even longer. So I don't I don't personally think that's too long. Um, I, I have so many, I also, I just saw a comment here. Uh, Barbara says, this is so cool. My brain is now on overload with ideas, I, mine too. So my next project um, is to do the mandala which is this design here. And we're going to do this in on a bigger scale with more detail and more color and put it onto a tote bag. And I'm going to make a full tutorial for that so you can see how that mandala uh, works and all the designs and how you can personalize the center here with, you know, you can have a design or you can have your initials like I have and then how to ap apply it to the tote bag with the color. And we're going to be using, it'll be all, um, all of the Cricut Infusible Ink pen. We're gonna use all pens for that. All right, let's see. Heather says, can you use the laser inkjet paper on other items besides the coaster or do you need different paper? Can you use different ceramic co coasters or only theirs? First of all, it's um, laser copy paper, not laser inkjet paper. Now maybe that's it's okay to use one that works for both. I don't know. All I know is the directions say to use laser copy paper, just so that's clear. Um, and that's the only paper that we use with the Cricut Infusible ink pens, just laser copy paper and the pens. There's no other paper that I've seen. So, and as far as being able to use other blanks, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know yet because I haven't had an opportunity to test it yet. I will be testing in the future and I'll be letting you know 
what works and what doesn't. I'm mostly going to be focusing on uh, blanks that Cricut does not currently have um, because they have some really cool blanks right now, but there's a bunch of things they don't have. And I'm really curious to see if those blanks, um, we can use those. And if they do, maybe Cricut will come out with those blanks for us that we can buy much more easily than having to order them online. Okay, awesome. Where did I get the laser copy paper? I got it off Amazon. And I'll put the link to that in my tutorial as well as below this video so that you can see the exact paper I used if you want to get that. Um, it was Amazon Prime, so I got it really quickly. And it wasn't expensive, but you can also get laser copy paper at office supply stores. You, I think I'm pretty sure you can get it at places like Target and Walmart too. It's really easy to find. It's not a difficult thing at all. You can pop out and get it in like five minutes. As long as you've got a store five minutes away, you should be able to get that really easily. All right. Awesome. I think that's all the questions. If you think of more things or you are watching the replay, just leave your question below and I would be happy to... Uh, answer your question, do some testing, show you things. Now, before I go, I want to announce something really awesome. So Cricut has um, very graciously donated a Cricut maker for us to give away to the Jennifer Maker community. So we're going to have a summer maker giveaway starting today and going for the next 30 days. So from today, June 12th to um, Ju July 12th. We're going to have a giveaway that you can enter to win a Cricut Maker or a Cricut Easy Press 2 or a bundle of Cricut Easy Infusible Ink products that I'm going to buy and just give to you or um, one of my copies of my Cricut Coach Playbook. So there's a bunch of prizes and we did something similar like this in December and it was so much fun. And the way that you enter is you can come in every day. And there's different like activities and things that you can do. So you can get multiple entries for this. The more entries you get, the more chances you have to win. Okay. And I totally could see that last time. The people who were there doing it like every day, I could see they had way more entries. So definitely do that if this is something that interests you. So, um... And then Miranda, thank you so much, Miranda, has put the link to the giveaway. You go to that page and you'll see all the things. Now, one of the things I'll be doing is um, having you watch my videos and listen for the word of the day. Okay, so I will speak this word. It won't appear on the screen. So you need to listen for the word of the day. And um, I had thought of the word of the day for today and then forgot it. No, I got it. Today's word of the day is pen, P-E-N, pen, right? Because we experimented with the Cricut Infusible Ink pens today. So that's today's word of the pen if you would like to do that daily entry. And there's a bunch of other things you can do, like commenting and liking the videos and sharing them and subscribing to my YouTube channel and subscribing to my Facebook page. A lot of things you might have already done. Um, and they're one-time entries. If you've already done that, that's fine. Just let me know when you did it and you'll still get an entry for it. So I remember that so the giveaway ends on um, July 12th and I will announce the winner the next day, winners the next day. So that's super fun and awesome. All right. I am so happy that you joined me. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, just leave them and I'd be happy to come through and answer them for you. Watch for my full tutorial on making a mandala tote bag this weekend using the Cricut pens. And I think that's it. So remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. And if you enter the giveaway and show me your projects, I would be happy to make things as well. That's one of the things that you can do. All right. Until next time.